Hello, my name's Belinda and today I'm going to be talking about the sea otter. Otters are from the mustelid family and there are two main types, the river otter and the sea otter. Despite being from the same family, however, there are lots of differences between the two types. So, to avoid confusion, I'm going to focus on the sea otter. Sea otters are the heaviest members of the weasel family, weighing between 22 to 45 kilograms and live in coastal regions stretching along Japan, Russia, Alaska and the USA. Their coat is incredibly dense and acts as an insulating layer to keep them warm while they're out in the ocean. Their diet is made up of urchins, crabs, clams and octopi and they hardly ever leave the water. In order to obtain their prey, otters can dive up to 330 feet and are often seen floating on their backs while resting or eating. Sea otters also have a very long history with humans as they were very popular during the fur trade back in the 1700s. Historically, the sea otter population was estimated to be between several hundred thousand to more than a million. However, between the 1780s and the end of the 18th century, the fur trade was at its peak and sea otter pelts were highly valued throughout the world due to their thick, dense fur. Due to this popularity, the species was nearly eradicated, and by the early 1900s the population had drastically decreased to a total of just 1,000 to 2,000 individuals. Things were looking pretty bleak for the otters until 1911, in which a treaty called the Fur Seal Treaty of 1911 was created in order to protect fur-bearing mammals, such as fur seals and sea otters, from being hunted for their skins. Furthermore, sea otters also became listed under the Marine Mammal Protection and Endangered Species Acts in the 1970s. Many cultures were involved in the fur trade between the 17 and 1900s, but the first to turn the sale of sea otter pelts into a major industry were the Russians. It began when a Russian ship became marooned on an island, later named Bering Island, just off the coast of Russia. During the ten months that they were stranded, many men died of sickness, but those who survived did so because of the otters that lived there, as they were used as a main source of food. Eventually, the men managed to escape, and when they made it home, word began to spread. Before long, Russian hunters had travelled to the island in search of the otters, hoping to make a fortune. At the hands of these hunters, Hundreds of thousands of otters were killed and then sold, mostly to the Chinese. Sea otter pelts were very popular in Chinese culture and were highly sought after, particularly by the rich and powerful. Otter pelts were used to trim robes, capes, hats and coats and were often worn by ladies of high social standing. Furthermore, because of the fineness of the fur, it was often referred to by the Chinese as royal fur and by the Russians as soft gold. It is important to note that, based on these examples, the otter represented two different things to the two cultures during the fur trade. To the Russians, the otters started out as just a means of survival, but that changed once they were off the island. Based on the name they used for the pelts, soft gold, you can tell that they later viewed the otters as a source of income and as a means to make profit, while the Chinese, who referred to the pelts as royal fur, viewed the otters as a way to show off their wealth and high social standing. Both cultures, however, had determined their worth based on the quality of the otter's fur, as it's the densest of all mammals and it rarely molts. To them, the otters were worth millions, which is very interesting because it was ultimately people that had decided on that worth. Today, because of protection laws, sea otter numbers have slowly recovered and they are estimated to be around 106,000 worldwide. However, although this is an improvement since the days of the fur trade, their numbers still stand well below the originals. Furthermore, the worth and importance of the sea otter has changed again in recent times, as they are no longer simply valued for their fur. Sea otters are now recognised as a keystone species, which I'll talk about in a minute, and are also a critical part of the marine ecosystem. As I said before, otters are what's known as a keystone species. This means that their role in the environment has a greater effect than other species and that they help maintain the balance of marine and river systems. The sea otter is known to be critical in preserving kelp forests and shallow waters as they prey on the creatures that would devour the kelp. This is important because not only do kelp forests offer cover to many other marine animals, but they also reduce levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide by capturing carbon in ecosystems. Therefore, they indirectly reduce greenhouse gases and assist in reducing global warming. Despite the laws protecting the sea otters, they still face many threats, most of them caused by humans. These include oil spills, which damage their fur and organs, 
fishing nets which often cause them to drown, and habitat degradation, in which human pollutants run off the land into the ocean, contaminating their habitat and food sources. However, the one threat that exceeds all other causes of death combined is shark attacks. It is believed that these attacks are the driving force behind the deaths of most of the population, but unfortunately, researchers are unsure why. This makes it difficult to solve the problem. The concerns I just mentioned are the main factors that will affect the future of the sea otter, particularly because they are a threatened species. On one hand, however, it is important to remember population sizes have been steadily increasing since the days of the fur trade. On the other hand, it also needs to be acknowledged that humans haven't done enough in order to promote their sustainability. We depend heavily on fossil fuels, despite there being a rise in alternatives in recent times, and that's making them sick and destroying their habitat. We also allow fishermen to continue using the same nets that drown the otters instead of researching an alternative that would acknowledge both parties. And, after acknowledging the popularity of the fur trade, it is clear that we have been preventing the sustainability rather than promoting it. If we truly believe that sea otters are an important part of the ecosystem and we want them to have a future, something needs to change.